similar to Facebook status updates. If you're not familiar with Twitter, basically, it's a very simple web-based application that allows you to follow people, but also others to follow you, and you're allowed to update update your followers on what are you doing or what are you thinking or what's going on. I've seen corporate uh, corporate or companies now using this to go and inform marketing lists or you know that small group of innovators that really care about what's going on with your firm. But essentially, this could be an interesting way to join join your campus join our campus recruitment uh, Twitter Twitter follow or I guess it'd be our tweet. It would what it's actually called. Um, unique way. It'll also make you stand out from the crowd. And I think this is the piece here that's really critical: is you're not trying to go get all 25,000 students interested in your company. You're trying to go find those 50 absolute top talent, you know, gems, diamonds in the rough. That if you brought them into your organization, they're going to be top performers in a matter of six months of being there. Text messaging. Uh, again, I, if there's 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 an ability here, I would have something when they go and apply, or if they sign up to your to your pipeline on your website, I'd put a little thing. Is it okay if we text message you? Because they've all got mobile phones. This is again a competitive advantage and a, more of a unique, simplistic way to go and essentially give yourself a competitive advantage over your competitors. KPMG, and I apologize if anyone KPMG is on this call. I may be wrong on this, but I don't believe there is. Is, is not going to send out text messages around around what's new and unique about about what's going on on their campus. Hey, I'm going to be on campus next Wednesday. Come on down. Um, I would like to meet with you and, and have a chat and buy lunch, for example. And there's some great online text messaging tools that people can just sign up for, and you can actually message everyone at once. And again, uh, the phone works great too. Um, so. All of this stuff works, but ultimately the, the, the relationship will never really get built unless there's a good solid face-to-face -face meeting or some kind of phone call or some kind of a, a conversation. All right. And the last piece I want to mention, and some of you may be aware of this, but there's been a there's been a interesting virtual career fairs are starting to pop up more and more. I, I believe that this is this is very likely the the way things are going to go, and they'll become much more, um, much more prominent over time. I'd look for, and I haven't seen this yet, but I'm willing to put money on it that the Campus Careers Center is looking at ways to go and better connect employers. And my guess is they start incorporating this on a regular basis for their whole student body. So I'd keep an eye out for this. There's some great tools. There's some great companies out there that are doing these now. Um, again, I, I haven't seen any that are really specifically campus focused yet. But my guess is that the career centers are actually going to start launching this if they haven't already. So keep your eyes out for the, this this idea. And if you're unfamiliar with it, basically all it is it's like a it's like a virtual world that a student walks through and can go and walk up to a company and you're instant mess messaging, chatting with that individual right then and there about job opportunities at your company. So very very cool. Um, the last strategy I want to talk about is focus marketing on a broader scale. So ideal candidate versus specific campus is what I want to say. So well, my company's based in Vancouver, BC, so I guess I should go target BCIT, UBC, and SFU. And my answer to that is that's totally, totally wrong. And the reason being is think Canada-wide. There are, I know this is a simple, people people constrain themselves and they say, okay, well, I need to go hire, I, I want to go hire accountants, and I'm going to use this for, in a second. The University of Western Ontario, for example, has a huge Western Canadian contingent to their student body. There, and, and the high majority of them are coming back to Vancouver afterwards. If I'm going to go hire, look to hire people in Vancouver, why would I only do UBC and SFU and BCIT? With the web and the strategies that I've talked about here, the idea here is that it doesn't limit you from a geographic region perspective. So you can actually go and target a, a wide variety and think Canada-wide to go connect with your top students that you're looking for across the country because they've, there's, a, there's, a good, there's a good chance they move for school and there's a good chance they'll move for work. And again, I'm going to talk into the, the things for tomorrow, but, but really focus in on don't, don't just blast the entire country. Take your time to go make sure that you pick the right, the right schools that you really want to recruit from and, and use these strategies within those top schools that you, you think are applicable, they've got applicable programs and so forth. Just to touch on that last slide, you think about nursing, right? And, and how hard it is for, for the, health, the health authorities right now to recruit nurses out of school. 
if anyone's on that, you know, I, I haven't had a chance to see the updated list of who's on this this webinar, but if you're doing health recruitment, I'd have a serious look at you, these strategies because, again, all these nursing programs, they've all got groups on Facebook, and this is a great way to start building brand affinity with them very, very early on, even in their first year. So an example I want to give is I'm an, I'm an accounting firm. I've got 200 employees based in Vancouver, BC, and I'm looking to hire approximately 8 to 12 new grads this year. So the plan, basically, the simplistic thing of, of – uh, is build a simple website that will speak to potential candidates. So, if you're if you got 200 firms, do not go try to compete. This is the, this is KPMG's website. This looks, you know, this is going to attract a very very specific type of individual. Um, if you got 200 people and you're a little bit smaller, and you know everyone knows the the partners, and it's that kind of culture, you really want to leverage that. You want to go build collateral and a site that obviously speaks to your speaks to your brand, but also really speaks to who is it that wants to go listen. Because you got to you got to stop caring about that 95% of people that would be putting like a it's like a uh, a square peg in a round hole. What you want to do is you want to go develop a message that really speaks to specific individuals. And this is actually a screenshot from Providence Securities Career site. So each one of those those uh, 10 videos there, you click on it, and it's a, it's a it's a it's a video on why these types of why these people work there and what their interest is. And then right below that, at all times, you can see you can always view the jobs that are open, and it makes it very simple to apply. And what you're seeing there at the bottom left is actually the higher desk application or the higher desk applicant tracking system that they use on the back end to go and, and make it simple for candidates to apply to their company. So the key student groups, right? So as I mentioned, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm looking for an accounting firm, I typed in UBC Accounting, for example, and it came back with 240 members. Click on the link and it goes in and I and I can see what's going on and I can see who some of the members are and if I would have scrolled down further here and, and I should have added this screenshot now that now that I think of it but you can actually see who these 240 members are so you've actually got an automatic pool of people the amount of time and money it would take for you to actually go and, and actually connect with those 240 people would be thousands of thousands of thousands of dollars instead with the way things are happening they've got this so you can see as I mentioned many of the student groups are using Facebook as their application to manage their memberships uh, now and manage events and so forth. So obviously they've got their website, click on their website and there we go, I've got access to who their, who their executive team is, um, who's on their team, when their next events are and so forth. So what would I do with this now? Um, the first thing I would do is I'd approach the student president or whoever's in charge of sponsorships or who's involved, uh, who's looking after this component of their association. Um, I ask them to sponsor their Facebook page. Now, I'm throwing out a thousand dollars per year. It's pro that's probably a ton that you'd have to be able. To, I mean, you could probably you could probably offer them five hundred dollars and they'd be ecstatic. Now, if you if you went to that accounting site, you'd also if you scroll down, you'd see that there's there's probably twelve different accounting firms with their logos on it and explanation of 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 why people should work at their company. So, from a blue ocean strategy perspective. You don't want to go sponsor that, but you, you don't. You, yes, you I mean you want if you're going to go sponsor them, you want your logo on that page. But what you really want to do is you want to you want to sponsor the Facebook page. This tactic will will come back in spades. The key is is don't go do this if students can't get in touch with you afterwards. And this is where the career site or careers page becomes very very critical and simple for students to stay interested in you. Um, if you're able to get this, I'd ask for a monthly message to be sent out to the members on Facebook and a monthly email campaign. The reality is, is these student groups don't have a lot of structure around how they work with sponsors. They just don't. So they're always open to, to, to um, programs and propositions on how you do this. Now you can imagine for 500 bucks a year, or let's make it even simpler, what is that, 40 bucks a month, just for, just for the UBC Accounting Club, you can go out and send messages and build your brand affinity with this group for, for 40 bucks a month. Total, total no-brainer that'll give you massively high ROI on this and a very, very simple task to go do. And that monthly message may be something to do with, hey, reminder on an open house, reminder on here's our job opportunities, um, speaking event that may be on, on their campus, or we've updated our careers site, or anything along those lines just to stay in front of them. Drive all the traffic back to your careers website and make it really, really simple for people to sign up. So even if it's just their first name, last name, school, um, an email address to start with, that's that's going to have a lot of value to you and my belief is you can build your talent community very quickly that way and we've seen it. Hold a quarterly webinar if, if you want to get, you know, similar to this today, the webinar software is actually fairly affordable to go use. 
have a quarterly webinar and explain and, and, and have students will be very comfortable signing up for this and learning about why it's important. So again, this is where th there's the geographic bounds that we talked about is you don't have to go to Montreal to go connect with McGill students if you're in Vancouver. By, by focusing on things like Facebook and connecting directly with these student groups and then driving some kind of messaging through things like webinars can have huge benefits to your firm. And then essentially, if that was your approach with, with the UBC Accounting Club, it's, it's lather, rinse, repeat, right? Look at your other student groups, look at your other departments, and for a couple hundred bucks a month, you can, you can have yourself a pretty effective campus recruitment program that is pennies, just absolutely pennies to go sponsor, or what it, this, these strategies can go and augment your current activities. So other ideas and tactics, run campaigns often of exam times. Make sure you know when exams are on those campuses. Do not, do not go run an event in the middle, the middle of when their exams are. You know what it's like is they're not going to respond. They're typically buried in their books. The target. For every one hire you need to make, so if you need to go hire 10 students and, and, and work this out by department, is try to get a talent community of a 10 to 1 ratio. If you're able to do this, your campus recruitment, you'll have tons of opportunities, tons of, tons of choice. And if you start it now in September, you'll be well ahead of the game come spring. Strategically pick your schools, ask your current employees, um, I'll bet they all didn't go to local universities, and if they've got professors that they can suggest with that they really like that you can go build relationships with, that also is in a very, very effective way to go and connect with top students because the professors will know them. Do an open call for phone interviews. So when you start building your talent community over the next couple months, do an open call and send out messages in January, but do an open call for phone call, phone conversations in February and March. Send out messages for this campaign, obviously, on a consistent basis. And my thought is, is anyone that signs up and does a 30-minute phone interview with you gets entered into a draw for a 40-inch flat-screen TV. If they don't take part in the phone screen, they don't get offered into it. But now what you've got is you're going you're gonna to get ears then. And, and the reason why you use this tactic, and some people say, well, why do I have to give this away to get, to, 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 you know, get them interested? The idea here is if you've got a unique employment value proposition, proposition to go sell, you need to get people to listen to that. And this is a very, very cheap, effective way. And again, this is just an idea. It could be an, um, it could be a, uh, you know, an iPhone or, or whatever the case is. But what you need is you need ears and you need people to listen to and get your best salesperson or your top recruiter or somebody that can really go pitch. Maybe your department heads are perfect for this on why is it that those students should go consider. This is not a, this is a phone interview, but what it really comes down to, this is an opportunity to go pitch, pitch your company and explain your value proposition. Because if you do your job, candidates that will either say, you know what, this is not a fit for me, but they're going to go tell five people about how cool your company is and they'll probably come sign up and stay interested in you. On the flip side is you've got, a, you've got an attentive audience that you can go sell and, and go attract to your company. So I want to just kind of wrap things up here very quickly because I know I want, there's probably some questions that I want to spend some time on here. Um, five things for today and for tomorrow. Talk to your marketing department about a campus recruitment focused website. Um, and, and you know even use, use, the, use the strategies and use the format that I've given out here today. I do want to touch on one thing. There's a website that I haven't mentioned on this that I... I it, it kind of uh, cued with me this morning. There's a website called standoutjobs.com. And standoutjobs.com is a, is a, is a, a, a media-rich careers website that you can get started for pennies. This could be a very, very simple way for you to go create this careers website. That'll be, that'll, again, you can integrate RSS feeds. You can integrate video. So I encourage you to have a look at this. The only challenge is it won't plug into an applicant tracking system. But what it will do is it'll give you a great way to get some presence very, very quickly. So... If you're saying to me, okay, Cam, that's great. When am I possibly going to have time to go build a careers website? Go have a look at standoutjobs.com and go look at what they offer because they've got a great product to go, to go build a, a rich, uh, uh, a media rich and, and a, a good looking careers website in a short period of time. Start a Facebook page with a focus on campus recruitment and drop that, that Facebook page widgets so people can join right on, right on your material. The, uh, this is a very simple play to do it. You're going to have to look for content. I would, I would look to make sure that you, on a monthly basis you've got messages that are going out and use the Facebook page as the baseline for how you communicate with your talent community. Identify the top 10 schools you want to recruit from, from across Canada. This is critical. Identify and reach out to the presidents of the key student groups of these campuses regarding sponsorships and a marketing program. And they may even just be happy, you know, 
they, they may not have even wanting sponsorship. They may just be happy that companies are interested to, to go talk to their students that are because that that gives them that increases their value proposition on campus to ultimately increase their memberships.